Nature is a game of survival of the fittest, and every creature still standing has found a way to keep themselves from harm. Nature's had millions of years to perfect this. So it only makes sense that we turn toward them for ways to keep ourselves safe. This low collar could seriously reduce the concussion problem in sports, seeing how synthetic fish scales can be a form of armor. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Looking to a particularly toxic creature to protect us. Poison dart frogs could eventually help save lives. And using soda to prove that woodpeckers can prevent concussions. Awesome. I'm Danny Washington, marine conservationist, biologist, and thrill seeker. And this week we explore how, when it comes to safety, nature knows best. Hi, I'm Danny Washington, and welcome to Nature Knows Best. When it comes to safety and survival, the plants and animals all around us are the best of the best. They've had millions, if not billions of years to perfect the art. What we learn a lot from nature's creatures to help ensure our own safety and our own survival. And some of the biggest safety concerns facing humankind today are traumatic brain injuries, also known as concussions. In the US alone, Athletes suffer from around 300,000 concussions every year. And at least 25% of those afflicted fail to get assessed by medical personnel. Concussions are a problem because unlike injuries where we see the athlete goes down and they have a, a broken leg or a, a hurt knee, concussions appear to be a little bit more of a silent problem. And studies into better helmets have always come up short. Helmets basically just add more weight or mass to the head. They make more leverage, so when you get hit, it can increase the acceleration. But it's not ultimately protecting that, that brain inside the skull. The typical forces that our brains are used to dealing with are less than 8 Gs. An impact on a football field can be anywhere from 10 all the way up to 2 or even 300 Gs of force. That would be pretty difficult for most people to sustain since we have predominantly a liquid space inside our skulls. When anything impacts it from the outside, that leads to a massive amount of absorption of the energy in all of the brain structures. When experiencing a violent impact, the brain moves within the skull, a process doctors are referring to as slosh. What do we have here? Well, Danny, we're going to do an experiment called soda slosh. Dr. David Smith has pioneered slosh studies and has created many experiments to show the energy transmitted by concussions within our skulls. Slosh is the ability of fluids to move within a container. In one case, we're going to fill the container all the way to the top, taking away all the residual volume. But in the other one, we're going to leave a little bit of room, which is more of like what happens in our own cranial space. There's a little extra room called the reserve volume. And we're going to see after an impact when we drop it, how much energy is absorbed and then expelled through the soda. Sounds like it's going to be fun. So the more energy absorbed by our brain, the more damage it can cause. Let's take the one that's fully filled to begin with. Great. Hold it up to high, as high as you can. There you go. Right let, here? It, let it fall to the ground and bang. Now bring it over. That's our impact. Now we're going to open that as fast as you can. Okay, go. here we go. Fast, 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 fast. You can see that there is very little energy imparted and very little energy expelled, evidenced by the tiny amount of soda pop that came out. That makes sense. Now, Danny, we're going to see what it looks like when we impart those forces into a partially filled container. So we're going to drop it from the same height and then see how much force is expelled. Great. So here we go. Good part. Here we go. All right. Okay. Where there was more space in the bottle, more energy was absorbed and then expelled. If that were your brain, you might not be feeling too good. Oh, that was so cool. Did you see how high it went up? Isn't that amazing? That shows how much energy actually was absorbed into the container that was partially filled compared to the ones that were fully filled. The energy can't get in, therefore it cannot be released. If we were going to impact a skull, what would you rather have if it was your brain that was involved? A skull that was completely filled or one that was partially filled? Completely filled, of course. 
Well, would you believe what woodpeckers and head ramming sheep are capable of doing and reduce those energies? And we're going to learn more about how that might actually help out our kids today. Up next, how a collar can protect our brains, like an egg that doesn't break in a paint shaker. Wow, check it out. The egg managed to handle all of those forces. Welcome back to Nature Knows Best. Would you believe that over the last decade, the U.S. Defense Department has spent over $800 million researching brain injuries, with other companies spending multiple millions more? You have to wonder why they didn't turn to nature for inspiration a little sooner. Head ramming sheep are amazing because on average they're Im imploding into each other at 500 g-force. Woodpeckers are even more amazing because they smack at 1200 g's and woodpeckers do so 12,000 times a day. And yet we tend to have concussive symptoms anywhere from 50 to 150 g's. The woodpecker has an absolutely fascinating anatomy. The tongue apparatus starts on the beak and goes way up over the top of the skull, comes back around to either side of the vascular tree, and compresses the jugular vein. When the head moves forward and the shoulders are attached to this, they pull like the reins of a horse directly back on the jugular vein. This creates a pressure that fills the area around the brain, protecting it like bubble wrap and the energies of the impact are no longer absorbed by the brain. And head ramming sheep have a muscle that also protects them from concussions. All vertebrates, which means anyone that has a spine, has an omohyoid muscle. Like the tongue of the woodpecker, this muscle creates slight pressure on the jugular vein. And humans have one too, but it's only used when we yawn. Based upon this research, we set out and created our collar. Called the Q collar, it sets out to fill the space around our brain. Without it, concussive forces affect our brains like an egg in a paint shaker. Dave, what are we doing here? Well, what we're trying to demonstrate is actually how forces enter into containers that are partially filled versus completely filled. And similar to the soda slosh that we survived, the energies were much more greatly absorbed into the container that was partially filled. Well, now we're going to show you what that means in the way of an egg, which would represent our brain. So what we're going to impart is the energy of a paint shaker. Okay, here we go. Just like the soda experiment, if there's space in the container, the egg scrambles. And in a full container, mimicking the brain of a person with the collar on, those forces pass right through. Wow, check it out. The egg is still intact and managed to handle all of those forces. Right, and this is what the cue collar is capable of doing for us. We actually have this dramatic reduction in injury. But what the collar does is put a slight pressure on your jugular vein, so it's kind of like putting a kink in your garden hose, and you get an immediate backfill around your brain, it creates an automatic airbag. In one or two heartbeats, we've automatically filled up that extra space in our brain, and then we don't have that brain moving inside our skull. We blocked 83 percent of concussive damage on our first landmark study, and we then set out to try to prove that it was safe. So we see that the collar works. Now we want to find out if there are any adverse effects on the body when you wear one. I'm at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, where they've devised some tests to assess this. And they've outfitted me with 37 sensors to do the measurements and create my very own skeleton avatar. There's the worm. Let's do it. <laughs> So what these markers do, they're basically just reflective little balls. They're going to be shooting impulses from our cameras. We're going to be reading that. We're going to be looking at your biomechanics, and importantly, your biomechanics with the, without the collar and with the collar to see if there's any changes in how you perform sports-related tasks. Let's jump up and get that basketball. We're going to check out those hops today. Let's All right. see how you do it. First, the basic athletic exercise of jumping without. Nice Got job. It. And then with the collar. Definitely snug but not uncomfortable. It feels good. There was no difference in how I performed. Right, let's get that back. Then a fine motor skill task, testing mental ability. This is actually fun. First without, and then with the collar.
actually improved on this one with the collar. Done? I'm done. 83. Woo! <laughs> By the time I was done with the various tests, it was clear there were no adverse effects with the collar, proving that it was safe to use. That's good. This collar is one of the first times I believe we can help millions. It's really a potential game changer in allowing my kids and their kids to be able to continue to play the wonderful sports that I had. There has not been a single negative finding on any of the work that we've done. We just wanted to mimic what the animals have already used. Why in the world would we try to do something different? Because nature's had millions of years to perfect this. This little collar could seriously reduce the concussion problem in sports. And to think, we have a little woodpecker to thank for it.